this meeting will now come to order. Um, this is a regular business meeting on Tuesday, November 18th. Um, Juanita, call the roll. Okay. And before we start, um, for the record, Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Perry will not be in attendance tonight. Uh, Judy Ed Boyd. Present. Mary Rose Mangia. Here. Rachel Morella. Here. Randy Brockway. Rich Regan. Here. Okay. okay. Everyone stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, one person who was asked to um, address the board for public comment, uh, Julie Lo Lobby. Uh, can you step forward? Hi. Hi, Julie. Good evening. Uh, Julie Lobby, 505 York Road, um, Lake Park Karen. Um, coming um, in regards to um, something that you're going to be looking at and talking about with the ethics and gift ban, um, for those that aren't familiar with it, and maybe you are on the board, um, I had experience with this because even before this law came into effect, it was banned at the school I was teaching at where we couldn't be accepting gifts. And what we had come up with is a wish list. And as a PTA rep, long story short, um, we categorized it. And I'm willing to share that with the district and the PTA and PTOs. We did say cleaning supplies, art supplies, library supplies for the classroom library. Um, obviously, like the younger grades wanted more disinfectants, the upper grades say wanted more Windex for the whiteboards. And that's where the PTA um, applied their money and what we did. Um, what I have a problem with, I guess, in long story short, is the letter that came from the attorney. Because I, I, speaking as he does in the law firm, um, I don't think he quite understands our PTA and the function of the PTA. Um, we're not trying to influence and give extravagant gifts. We're trying to work for the common good of the students and all involved. So when we buy something, say, for Teacher Appreciation Week, it's something for the entire staff. It's something for the entire school. It's not something that people are taking home individually. Um, if there is something individually, it's a little flower that's a dollar or something that we or that was donated. Um, not getting to the $100 range, not getting to the $75 range. So it's all right. something um, for the school. All right. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Um, but I want you to realize that when you, if you pass this, you should realize that PTA should be exempt and should not be a prohibited source. Um, That's what I want you to think about that. I think you took this off the, off the website because you saw that he said people wouldn't be prosecuted and all that, whatever it is, that's, I don't it, mind. It, it shouldn't have been released because it's attorney climate okay. privilege. It was an error. Okay, but I'm just saying that, because even without reading that, I read this first and I was going to speak to this anyways, that you should keep that part. It's very vague. It's very nice. Education materials and missions. And let the people give and show their appreciation. So instead of giving a $100 gift card to Bed Bath & Beyond, if a teacher wanted that, let us buy $100 worth of supplies. Let a parent give that box of chocolate because we're not going to spend $100 per year on a, as a family. It says per person. Right. So you should keep this as is and not let the, P, and let the PTA be in charge of a wish list. That's my suggestion to you. Let the PTA be in charge of a wish list and do things for those teachers because you have to let the people show appreciation. And if you look at any other staff, any other political employee, any other state employee, Guarantee you, with all the things I've seen in my husband's work, people get gifts. And they're far more than our teachers get, okay? You look at other school districts that are affluent, I know what some of them get. They're not abiding by this law. We can abide by it, but don't let us, don't tell us that we can't give something to our teachers. So I urge you to keep that number in there and let us buy at least the stuff for their classroom. And don't prohibit PTA. Let us be that head of the wish list and implement them. We're not going to give them a five hundred dollar thing to the World Series. We're going to give them something for their classroom that all can benefit from. I want you to think of that. It's for the kids. If we do that, it's for the kids. It's not for the teacher. It's for the kids. It's for the classroom. It's for the school. Just keep that in mind. Thank all right. you. All right. Thank you, um, Julie. Uh, any other comments? Um, I don't think so. Um, all right. Um, all right, uh, 
Next item on the agenda, uh, Bob will just update us on the status of FOIA requests. Sure, we have um, a FOIA request from the Illinois Education Association, um, the NEA, requesting the following information um, for certified staff, um, their job titles, and all of the employee information listed in your packet. Um, a follow-up letter from Matt Harmon at the Illinois Attorney General's Office regarding the Public Access Council 31 31753 regarding the district's response to Bob Skolnick's FOIA request dated September 18th, and he has requested um, all the unredacted um, information um, per Mr. Skolnick's FOIA. And one new FOIA request from Lenny Jarrett at the Education Matters um, requesting how many teachers um, belong to the union, certified, non certified, and payment of their dues. And that is it. Um, thank you. Um, I just have uh, one brief announcement to make, again, board member training. Uh, some of us will be attending the Illinois Association of School Boards uh, annual conference where there are workshops and um, seminars and panel discussions and, again, just to make you aware of it. Um, and also Bob will be attending as well. Thank you. Bob, do you have any uh, announcements you'd like to make today? Sure. Um, from Ames, students in first through fifth grade are nominated uh, by their teachers to have lunch with the principal once a month based on the following criteria, most improved academically, most improved behavior choices, practice social um, emotional learning strategies, and as a good friend to others. Um, congratulations to the 14 students who earned pizza with the principal during the month of October. Their names will be listed in the board packet. Girls on the Run, AIM students who are members of Girls on the Run are working on a community project that is designed to have the girls pay it forward by doing something good and positive for others. Girls choose to help children with cancer at their population to serve and have collaborated with the Ronald McDonald uh, Children's Hospital at Leona University Medical Center. The girls have decided to collect gently used toys, books, and games to donate to the children at the Ronald McDonald Children's Hospital, in addition to decorating poster boards and the like with inspirational words and pictures to brighten up play areas and patient rooms. The weather unit project. I also had the privilege of attending um, this uh, showcase of projects. The second graders celebrated the culmination of the study of the weather units by inviting the parents to see them present their projects in the multi-purpose room a few weeks ago. The students conducted research on tornadoes, hurricanes, typhoons, blizzards, and other weather-related topics. Second graders created posters with visuals and factual information about their weather-related uh, subject. Life Park. Veterans Park celebration. Uh, students celebrated Veterans Day at an annual music concert um, led by Mrs. Lauritsen. <coughs> the students sang America the Beautiful, This Land is Your Land, and other patriotic song, and several vet veterans were in attendance at this celebration. To honor the presence, Life Park fourth graders sang Thank You Soldiers and um, a bugler played taps. It was a moving tribute and a beautiful celebration. Support Our Troops fundraiser, fundraiser, Veterans Day also marked the kickoff to the Support Our Troops fundraiser, which will be organized and led by the Blythe Park Student Council. Students will be donating non-perishable food and non-food items to our soldiers. Letters to the troops are encouraged and welcome, and the Support Our Troops fundraiser will run through November 25th. At Central, Central students took part in the Halloween costumes and candy collections after the recent Halloween holiday. Costumes were donated to Hethisba Children's Association in Oak Park. The candy that was collected went to Operation Gratitude. Operation Gratitude collects candy for our members of the U.S. Armed Services. Hollywood, Read to Succeed um, has really taken flight. For every minute that a Hollywood student reads, it is translated into two inches of altitude. As of Friday, November 17th, excuse me, November 7th, Hollywood School is flying at an altitude of 23,008 feet. And our goal is to reach their or the orbit. Candy for Troops and UNICEF. The members of Hollywood Student Council set two goals for their first two projects, Candy for the Troops and UNICEF. Students of Hollywood School surpass both goals. The goal for collecting candy, for the troops was to gather 50 pounds of candy. The total set to the troops weighed at 50, weighed in at 55 pounds and 0 .25, 0 0.25. The goal for collecting money for UNICEF was $200, and Hollywood students collected $226.25. The money will enable UNICEF to purchase a bicycle that will help deliver medicine as well as enough um, measles vac vaccinations for 450 children. 
And lastly, at Hauser, Spirit Week took place at Hauser the week of October 27th through 31st. Students were able to have special dress up days, and it culminated with the first trimester sock hop. Smart Club sponsored Red <laughs> Ribbon Week, promoting a drug and alcohol free lifestyle. Advisory classes completed a door decorating contest, and the Smart Club is undergoing a candy donation fundraiser for our troops. They will send 12 boxes of candy to our U.S. troops. French Week took place the week of November 3rd. Students wore French outfits and competed in a mime contest. The class with the most mimes won a French breakfast. Little Symphony had both American Boy Choir and Chicago Chamber Orchestra perform at Hauser in October and November. And the Hauser Chamber Orchestra performed the Star Sangle Bander at the Riverside Village Board meeting last month. Eighth grade Spanish trip um, to Pilsen students. Um, they were visited the Day of the Dead exhibit at the National Mexican Museum of Art, decorating sugar skulls, walked around Pilsen to see murals and mosaics, and ate lunch at Los Camales. And the fall play, which is going on right now, is Sherlock Holmes, The Incredible Murder of Cardinal Tosca. The play will take place uh, tonight, uh, November 18th, and tomorrow, November 19th. And uh, we were privileged to see a matinee today at 1 o'clock as with all of the students. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, all right, we have our um, first action item. Of, uh, there are no presentations today, uh, but we have our first action item on approving the minutes. Where's that action item sheet here? There we go. Um, I request a motion that the Board of Education accept the minutes of the regular business meeting of October 21st, the closed session meeting of October 21st, the Finance Committee meeting of, October, of uh, November 4th, uh, the minutes of the special meeting of November 4th and the minutes of the closed session November 4th. Um, I have a motion. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded uh, to approve the minutes as presented. <coughs> Rich Regan. Aye. Randy Brackway. Aye. Juliet Boyd. Aye. Rachel Morella. Aye. Mary Rose Mangia. Aye. Okay. Motion passed. All right. Next, we will hear from Bhavna on district um, priorities and goals. Thank you. Um, as we did last month, we are presenting them um, for our audience at home as well as um, in the room tonight. Um, our first area of academic and professional excellence, objective one, um, the technology team conducted a needs assessment to identify what technology-related professional development um, areas there are for staff. We also um, we're going to develop, based on those needs assessment, a technology plan, excuse me, a professional development plan for staff. The special education staff um, participated in professional development of how to navigate the park assessment in order to de determine any accommodations for students with special needs um, as they are going to differ from the paper pencil module. And we also analyzed the 13-14 district data to assess benchmark and student growth achievement levels. Um, for our objective two, um, the district cabinet members um, and social workers met with um, the Riverside Area Inclusion Network to plan activities um, in the School for Inclusion Awareness Week, which will be the first two weeks in December, uh, the first week for elementary and the second week for Hauser, and the focus will be on an inclusive community. Objective three, um, the all district leadership team met and we planned the second trimester of professional development, which was posted to our website today. Uh, the PARA, the Performance uh, Review, excuse me, the Performance Evaluation uh, Reform Act alignment team met to begin finalizing forms and procedures for our new teacher evaluation and performance growth models. Uh, we also provided some professional development regarding student publish publishing and Common Core State standards. Professional development will also be provided next week to psychologists, social workers, paraprofessionals, and administrators in crisis <coughs> prevention intervention to support students with social emotional needs, and this will be the phase one of training. Um, and I apologize, this is a duplicate from the first um, two that wasn't related, but this is where the uh, needs assessment for technology and professional development um, are better aligned to objective three than they are to objective one. Uh, number two, uh, goal area two for financial and operational excellence, develop a district facilities plan that considers enrollment projections, space concerns, safety, technology, and curriculum needs. Um, the technology department uh, is doing the implementation of core network remediations 
looking at routing and switching optimization as well as net network security and voice WAN optimization. Um, in your packet, uh, you will have the authorization of the Comcast Fiber WAN Internet Connectivity Contract. Um, the development of the Disaster Recovery Plan is based upon the new design and expectations of the district leadership team, so we're collaborating on that. Um, we're almost done migrating to our email services as well as our e-discovery services. And the Special Education Department is currently updating um, their current data to look at staffing, curriculum, and space allocations for the next school year. Object, um, objective three, we're also um, looking at drafting a policy for acceptable use with district technology. We are looking at centralizing our student and staff data via PowerSchool, um, which is our student information system. And we are also looking at um, implementing our, um, using PowerSchool to implement, um, excuse me, consolidating our student health module um, to establish, establish a more centralized database and recording for student health information. Um, objective four, we developed a new purchasing system for our FOSS science materials and um, collaborated with the development of our D96 GASB um, internal controls document. And we'll be talking more about that with some updates at the Finance Committee meeting on December 2nd. Goal area three for rigorous communications. Um, presented the board with three options for strate strategic planning and then we'll be discussing um, next steps. We also analyzed our 13-14 district data to assess benchmark and student growth achievement levels and got a baseline for strategic planning purposes. Um, objective two, um, Dr. Gann and I visited each school to present the state of the district um, and gave a cur curriculum and instruction overview. Um, we're in the process of finalizing the District 96 updates to the website to enhance communication via the centralization of resources um, and easier to navigate the site and we're looking at Monday uh, the 24th um, to reveal that. Um, the Director of Special Ed uh, is continuing to meet with area private schools to review the ongoing preschool screening and child find processes provided by the district. Uh, Mrs. Shaw also presented to um, the RAIN group um, last month and um, our sh first shared service quarterly meeting which will be held at the village offices um, with the two villages, District 208, 94, and 95, Parks and Recreation, and Library Districts will be held on Thursday, and um, Mary Rose and I will be attending that. And that is all I have. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, from the board committees, uh, uh, does anybody have any questions on the enrollment court report or any comments on the substitute report from the board? Okay. All right. Um, from our school board committees, um, neither of our chairmen are here today, the Finance Committee and the Education Committee, uh, but we haven't had an education meeting in the, uh, since October, so uh, there's, and uh, will not again until January, and the Finance Committee, we will be having a um, Finance Committee meeting in advance of the tax levy um, passing the tax levy uh, on, uh, when is it, December? Second. Second? All right, thank you. Um, and then we have, t t we've converted our policy committee to a superintendent's committee. And uh, Bob, do you mind reporting on that? Sure. Uh, Mary Rose, Randy, and I met on November 6th um, to dis discuss several policies from um, the Illinois Association of School Board Press Update 84. Um, and in your packet, we are recommending all <coughs> policies um, that are listed, uh, 2 colon 30, 2 colon 110, 5 colon 10, 5 colon 125, 5 colon 180, 5 colon 190, 5 colon 240, 5 colon 35, 7 colon 70, 7 colon 140, 7 colon 190, and 8 colon 95 for a first reading tonight and they'll be posted to the website uh, once the board approves uh, tomorrow for 30 days and then um, you can take action for a second reading and action at the December 16th meeting. Um, we will be reviewing the recommendations for policy 4 colon 30 and policy 7 colon 180. Um, we had those reviewed by your attorney um, so we'll be reviewing those at our next policy meeting on the 24th. All right just so that um, 
everyone understands our policies is we um, the district gets policies from a service the IASB and generally they they are um, Illinois Association of School Boards um, and generally they mirror the state laws in other words if there's a change in a state law um, it will generate a new policy and even like we were talking about the gift band act that it, our policy is a mirror of state laws and our goal is to modify uh, our policy modify the recommendations from the state uh, from the Illinois Association of School Boards uh, uh, to, uh, to make limited modifications if any um, to that just to understand how everybody understands how our policies are generated um, now I believe there is one policy in the group we had a minor change to that we're asking for tonight. Um, I don't know if you want to mention that. I believe it's the um, sure it's policy five colon thirty five compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, our attorney recommended that the work week for district employees will be twelve a.m. Monday to the work week for non-exempt employees will be tw twelve a.m. Uh, Monday. So instead of district employees, change it to non-exempt employees. All right. Uh, again, to be uh, <coughs> concurrent with the collective bargaining agreement mm -hmm. or consistent. All right. Um, so is the attorney reviewing all the ISB proposed changes as well now? No. Okay. How did this come across the legal counsel's desk? We referred it. Okay. So it's just as referred? Yeah. Okay. Again, our goal is to pass as many as possible. We can talk about that further. Um, when we at, uh, at the action item um, when we get to the action item part of uh, the policies today um, want to talk uh, again report on the technology steering committee sure uh, mr. Tafano sent out a notification that our next technology steering committee will be on December 4th and so we'll provide a more uh, detailed overview at the December 16th board meeting Bill, would you um, have you have anything for us today? Tonight. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. Thank you. Um, um, are there any questions <coughs> on any of the financial information items, the financial statements, the credit card statements, or the budget progress statement? Mm -hmm. All right, then. Um, we will move on. To um, the approval of the general invoices, schedules A751. Uh, I would like a motion that the Board of Education approve for payment the list of general invoices, schedule A751 as presented, and that's the payable pre list as, as of October 31st, and also the payables pre list as of November 18th. Um, a motion, please. So moved. Second. Um, Monina. Rachel Morella. Aye. Randy Brackway. Aye. Juliet Boyd. Aye. Rich Regan. Aye. Mary Rose Mangia. Aye. Motion passed. Mm -hmm. Next, this um, next item up uh, is the resolution to transfer funds from the education fund to the debt service fund. Um, again, this is um, just so that we're um, able to actually pay the next installment of our uh, debt. Um, and so the money must be transferred from the education fund into the debt service fund to do that. Uh, because we do not levy in the debt service. As, um, we all learned last, last uh, finance committee meeting. Um, Anyway, um, I move that the Board of Education approve the resolution transferring funds from the Education Fund to the Debt Service Fund of Riverside Public School District Number 96 in Cook County, Illinois. Um, and that with that transfer is in the amount of one million forty-eight thousand eight hundred sixty-two dollars and fifty cents, um, and it would be for the Debt Service Fund for. The fiscal year 2014-2015 for the principal and interest payments due for the 
200, well, 20111 series debt certificates uh, from the education fund. A motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Molina? Randy Brockway? Aye. Rachel Morella? Aye. Rich Regan? Aye. Juliet Boyd? Aye. Mary Rose Mandia? Aye. Okay. Motion passed. Thank you. Hmm. All right, next um, would be approval of the um, intergovernmental agreement for the crossing guards um, for, between District 96 and the Village of Riverside. Um, which we have talked many times um, in this board before Rich and uh, Juliet were members, but now we're just approving the um, agreement, uh, the intergovernmental agreement uh, um, that we we ag agreed to, I guess, for for the um, crossing guards that we negotiated. Any questions? Is it uh, is it correct to assume that our our ultimate exposure on this is about twelve thousand dollars? Is what I think I calculated it when I read through this. I know there's a cap of twenty five five, but when I went through the last year's expenses, we we only have exposure for fifty percent of five of those guards, right? Fifty percent of five, correct. Right. Thirty three percent of the sixth. Right. Right, but are the numbers in there, I assume, are our 50% share? Yes, that's our 50% share. Oh, that's 25. the 55%. Yes, 25283. Because okay. we, in the mm -hmm. past, Rich, we were not paying 50%, and that, right. was, and that was basically. Okay. Um, yeah. As I said, I don't. Okay, so the numbers represented here are. Our share. Our 50% share. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I believe they do true, true up, reconcile. Mm -hmm. the estimates that are in the agreement with the actual there's a provision in the agreement for that okay we will get a bill for the actual uh, okay um, any other questions all right um, may I have a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement um, for the crossing guards so moved. Second. Randy Brockway? Aye. Julia Boyd? Aye. Rich Regan? Aye. Rachel Morella? Aye. Mary Rose Mangia? Aye. Motion passed? Yes. All right, next would be um, <coughs> approval for first reading of the IASB um, um, Press issue 84 policies that we recommended that um, that we rec that the working committee has recommended be advanced to first read. And just for clarification, um, <coughs> we have two readings of our policy before they actually become law or be before they become official part of our policy manual. Uh, the reading uh, after. Uh, if we approve them all today, they will be posted for 30 days. If anybody has any questions on them or suggestions for changes, um, they need to get back to us in the 30 days um, before we, you know, before we pass, you know, before we pass them. And that would go for the board as well. If there's any reason you have any in questions or modifications to suggest, please get back to the working committee as, as soon as you can. Are we up to date now on the press releases? Nope. This is just 84. Where, where um, are we at? We have 87 that just came out a couple days ago, and we will be meeting next week on press 85. Right. And our goal is to, you know, just move them on. All right. Um, I'd like a motion that the Board of Education approve the of uh, the the policies, policy 230, school district elections, policy. Uh, Two colon one one zero qualifications, terms, and duties of board members. Um, 
policy 5 colon 10 equal employment opportunity and minority retirement recruitment rather policy 5 colon 125 personal technology and social media usage uh, and conduct <laughs> policy 5 colon 180 temporary illness or temporary incapacity policy 5 colon 190 teacher qualifications policy 5 colon 240 suspension policy 5 colon 35 compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act policy 7 colon 70 attendancy attendance and truancy policy 7 colon 140 search and seizure policy 7 colon 190 student discipline and policy 8 colon 95 parental in, um, involvement uh, and we are approving that these policies that I've just read will be posted on the district website for 30 days and move uh, and move to December 16 2014 regular business meeting for a second reading and final adoption um, a motion please so moved second Ridge Regan Aye. Rachel Morella Aye. Randy Brockway Aye. Julia Boyd Aye. Mary Rose Mangia Aye. motion passed Right. Um, next on the agenda is um, is the Comcast cast service agreement and First Amendment. Um, but I am going to um, not call this for a vote today. Uh, we'll pend it uh, for a future meeting because we're still looking for some uh, additional documentation. And uh, apparently, Don also mentions that one of the provisions can't be changed until such time as. We actually approve this agreement. So, um, so anyway, we will we will uh, address it again in, at a future meeting. Um, I'm sorry, just for clarification, we have to revise the E-rate agreement before we revise approve the Comcast agreement. Is that correct? No, it's just, just that um, pro provision for uh, the the discount counted rate versus reimbursement. Uh, so it's okay. a, a an odd provision in there okay so anyway next is <coughs> last meeting we changed um, the times uh, and uh, dates of some of our meetings but we are going to make one additional modification to the start time uh, or I'd like to make one additional modification to the start time of the regular business meeting going to move to start it at 6.30 so that the board can have a closed session prior to the meeting uh, versus at the end of the meeting. And um, so we will begin our board meeting at 6.30, but our intent is to continue to start the regular business meeting, uh, the open session with public comment at 7.30, as it always has been. Um, but, and, and to change that time, we, we must pass it in open session. So um, anyway, um, I'd like a motion that the Board of Education approve the new start time for the regular business meetings as um, uh, regular business meetings effective Tuesday, December 16th uh, through March 17th, 2015. Um, the list of meet, uh, the meeting dates will be created for the remainder of the school year at the biennial reorganizational meeting following the April 7, 2015 consolidated elections. And again, just to repeat, uh, we will be changing the start time from the start time we started today at 7 uh, to 6.30. Uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. Rachel Morella. Aye. Randy Brockway. Aye. Juliette Boyd. Aye. Rich Regan. Aye. Mary Rose Mandia. Aye. Um, motion passed. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Next, a couple of uh, new business items, and we are going to um, start out with the ethics and gift band, and I'd l like to recognize Juliet uh, for her thoughts on this. Mary Rose, this came up, and I'm happy to see here we have a bunch of um, people from the PTO. At our last meeting, uh, in a completely different context, it was brought to our attention that there was a thing called the gift band act and it prohibited the giving of gifts to public officials over certain amounts. And I think some of the parents on the board recognize that there may be some issues with regards to some practices that we as parents have been contributing to in the district. 
And I think what we had done at that time was asked that the administration just communicate to the PTO and all the interested parties, the teachers, that heads up, there's this act that we should all be aware of. Unfortunately, as sometimes happens when things are communicated, it wasn't it communicated that there is an act that we should follow. It was communicated that the board had passed a policy, was contemplating a policy banning gifts, which isn't correct uh, and is accurate and is terrible because it places this idea that we are the Grinch that stole Christmas and we are going to take Christmas away from the teachers, which could not be further from the truth. What actually was the case was the concern that we have lots of parents out there who are trying to do something nice for the teachers. However, we don't want to place teachers in a difficult ethical dilemma of having these gifts prohibit the act. So what we had said was, please just communicate to people, there is an act, be aware of that. That was the extent of the communication. Somewhere between there and today, there have been memos, there have been other things. <coughs> However, Mary Rose, I think that it is problematic. Uh, I do not think, I think our original request is now communicated. Guys, there's an act. Please be aware of it. We're all adults. We can read. There are various things on the Ethics Commission. There are documents there. I think ISBE has a memo on it. That's all that the information is that's out there. I think it is problematic to require some sort of amendment and policies and et cetera, et cetera. As a board, our role is to make sure that we are in compliance with the law. We have a policy that reflects and mirrors the law. So I think as a district, as a board of education, we are in compliance. We have that. We've done our job. We've communicated to the teachers and the, um, the PTAs, all of whom are smart adults who can read the same information we could read. It is not the role of the Board of Education to give legal advice. It is not the role of the Board of Education to legislate. I think, and I would move that we take no action on this, uh, that the policy that we have, which just reflects and, and mirrors state law, is sufficient, uh, that it would be a quagmire and a problem to try and launch into doing something that is outside of the scope of what we should be doing, um, and just rather let people know and, and be aware of the policy that's out there. So I would suggest and would be my recommendation that uh, we take no action on this and that the policy stand as it is, and not to provide legal advice and not to be legislating. All right, are there any other uh, thoughts on um, Juliet's, um, or on the Gift Man Act? I agree with Juliet, and I'd like to add to that. We actually, we can legislate. I've, I've looked at the provision, and it does allow us to be more prohibitive as long as it's as restrictive as the um, Ethics Gift Ban Act. And um, Julie, I know you commented, you said, please don't define PTAs as prohibited sources, and we, we don't define that. That's that's the the, yeah. the Illinois state yes the Illinois the state defines that and who defines that is whoever's enforcing that whether it be um, the state ethics commission or it would be in the alternative um, state's attorney which they do prosecute because there is a risk of criminal liability here so just to let us know that that's not that's out of our realm and we have not made it more restrictive than. The, the statute it's it's we exactly mirrored as is yeah and I think that's the thing I don't think we want to the only thing we could do is make it more restrictive and I don't think that that's what we want to do so we just got want to communicate to people that this is there be aware of it and, and that's it and thank you David for bringing it to our attention because yeah. we don't want to place teachers in an unfortunate we'd ethical situation we'd rather hear it from our employee than have to hear it somebody getting charged um, yeah thank you Juliet um, President, could could we ask David to give us just a two-minute summary of the purpose of the gift band? If, if you don't mind, we I'll could ask. One minute. Okay. okay. Um, 
there, there's a word out there. It's 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 a very offensive word. It's called bribery, and and bribery is against the law. And the spirit of the gift ban act is to avoid uh, temptation for a setting to be created involving any kind of a government employee. And the Illinois State Board of Education has translated that, translated that into the governance of school districts so that everybody gets as far away from the word bribery as possible. And that's really the spirit of it. And so accepting a gift that has a, a shocking value, you know, a high value, is a potential exposure. So generally speaking, the, the, the gift should be of nominal value. And the, the, the number that they put into the law is $99. And, uh, I've looked at it in the past as like an event. When, an, when a gift is given, then you ask the question, is it from a prohibited source? And is it a prohibited gift? So I, I really appreciate the stance that this Board of Education is taking right now, because it's not my role to right now try and render some kind of a legal interpretation of the Gift Ban Act. I think I've said enough. Um, <laughs> And, and that's just it. But for me, my own personal view is that it's, a, it's an anti-bribery uh, act. And we all know that that's a, a bad thing to have happen in any kind of governmental context. Yeah, and again, Thank I don't you. see this act as, or at least the spirit of this act being particularly unusual. I've worked in many corporations where every year I have to sign an ethics statement and our limit was $25, and, um, and people didn't, didn't cross it. Um, you know, so for me, it's not all that unusual. And I do suggest if you're giving school supplies and such, donate them to the school. Um, I mean, you know, isn't that allowed? Well, and again, let's not get into saying what's allowed or uh, not what allowed and giving legal advice. Like I said, the, the, the statutes out there, um, there, are, there are dollar amounts in the statute, you know. So it's just, you know, it's, it's one of those common sense things. It's the appearance of impropriety. You know, if you're giving a teacher large amounts of money and all of a sudden the kid gets a good grade, I mean, that's what they're trying to avoid. That's the spirit of the act, is that there's a quid pro quo that happens. And it's, it's not limited to teachers, it's all public officials. So, um, and like I said, because it is all public officials, there's lots of stuff out there that talks about the Gift Ban Act. I don't think, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but we don't want to get more restrictive than that. So let's just, I think we've got the, we've, we're complying with state law. We'd like that everybody else does and no one is placed in any difficult situations. And I think we, that's enough said. All righty, um, I'd like to move on then. Um, and uh, to the next item on our agenda, uh, which is um, school and student safety. Um, <coughs> We had a request from a board member to discuss this topic in light of the recent um, incident that happened over at St. Mary's and thought it might be worth worthwhile to review our safety procedures. Do you want me to just give an update? Or is there a, a question? Um, well, I guess let me ask a specific question. Did we do anything different um, as a response to that particular incident? We are required to do um, uh, an intruder drill, and we do that in cooperation with the police departments. So we had that scheduled um, last Thursday. And just so everyone knows, we have a district um, liaison for safety and crisis, and that's uh, Stacy Weston. So she represents the district leadership team and works with uh, the police departments um, as far as communicating information back and forth. So last Thursday was a planned um, intruder drill where we work like, uh, in cooperation, as I said, with the Riverside and Brookfield uh, Police Departments. They were in our buildings, they worked with the principals, they went on lockdown, um, all parents were communicated um, after, um, and I spoke to Chief Whitesell uh, after, and he said everything went well. There was a few minor issues in buildings that can be addressed with individual staff members, um, but nothing that was putting any child or staff member in danger. Um, in fact, he, uh, Lieutenant Coder uh, complimented our staff our administrators and Mrs. Weston um, for the partnership and the cooperation and the leadership that we've shown um, in being proactive. Was this a regularly scheduled drill? 
Yes, we had to do it. Uh, we do it annually, and it was scheduled, I believe, prior to maybe uh, Stacy, wasn't it before the incident that happened Correct. at St. Mary's? Okay. It was scheduled in October. Okay. And how many drills are there per year? There's one intruder drill. Yeah. Any other questions? Or Bob, were the, the specifics of the St. Mary's incident addressed during your drill? You mean from our staff? Right. No. Okay. When we got that press release, um, that came to myself and Dr. Skinkis, mm -hmm. and I forwarded that on to you, and I forwarded it on to our principals, and I know it came out uh, a couple hours later in the paper, um, but we just shared it, and then each principal personally shared it with their staff. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. I know that when these incidents happen, it's always a good occasion to review policy and how would we react under similar circumstances. So and we do, um, you know, we meet weekly as a district leadership team and we bring up these situations all the time of mm -hmm. specific things that happened at a building, how about we just review things. Like we said, that uh, St. Mary's incident actually happened that morning, it was a Wednesday, and we meet on Wednesday afternoon, so we discuss that as well. Very good. Are we um, really at the end of our business meeting? Um, unless there's something anybody has to uh, bring up. Well, since nobody's bringing anything up, I guess I would like to um, request a motion to enter into closed session for the purpose of discussing the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district or legal <coughs> counsel for the district, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee or against legal counsel for the district to determine its validity, and also uh, to enter into closed session for the purpose of discussing collective negotiating matters between the school board and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. Um, so moved. Second. Juanita? Okay. Randy Brockway? Yes. Rich Regan? Aye. Juliet Boyd? <coughs> Rachel Morella? Aye. Mary Rose Mangia? Aye. Okay. Motion passed. All right. Thank you. We'll be adjourning.